Hey friends, now we're ready for our paper mache part of our project. So I've got all my little mice and hedgehogs taped up and ready to go. So I've got some medium sized ones and some little ones. And here's another little one. And then I have um, the hedgehog too. And then I have a big mouse. So I'm going to talk to you about how to paper mache. So to paper mache, you will need newspaper. You'll need a bowl. You will need some water and a fork that you can stir with, and a little bit of flour. You don't need a ton, so just a little bit. Okay, so here's the first step. The first thing you need to do is you will need to tear yourself up a lot of paper. So I sort of have this pile over here that I started tearing, and you'll need some strips that are small, like this, for around the face area and the little pointy snout area, like this little area right here. And then you'll want some pieces that are a little bit bigger for the rest of the body. So when you tear newspaper, there is a certain way, believe it or not, there's a certain way to tear it so that it, it comes out straight into strips. So this is the right way to hold your paper. This is not the right way to hold your paper. So you want to hold your paper this way and start at the top and just tear straight down and you'll get a nice straight tear. And I just like to put it on the neck, keep it in my hand, just start at the top and tear down. So I'm tearing pieces that are about this wide. Okay. So I'm going to tear the rest of this. And I'm going to put that in a pile. And then I probably want some that are a little bit skinny too. So I'll tear some of them. You want to tear a nice pile for yourself because you don't want to have to stop paper macheing so that you can tear newspaper up. You want to have a nice stock pile for yourself. Now, if you made little teeny tiny mice, you're not going to, or whatever animal you chose to make, you're not going to need a giant pile of newspaper. I made like a whole family here, so I kind of need a little bit more. So... Um, just gauge how, how much you need based on how many little critters you made and what size you made, okay? Okay, so once you have your newspaper ripped, okay, and you don't want big ginormous pieces like this, okay, you do need to rip them up and even this is a pretty big piece, okay? Because what we're making is pretty small. If you were trying to cover something large, then obviously you would want larger pieces. Okay, now we need to make our paper mache. So you need a bowl, and I'm going to put in about, well, let's see. Um, and, and if you only made tiny little animals, you're not going to need that much paper mache. So I'm going to use about, that's probably about a cup, okay? And then you need some water, and pour it in a little bit at a time, stir it up, you will know it's ready when it's sort of like pancake mix. So obviously that is way too goopy. So I'm going to add some more water. And again, if you are making a little tiny creature, you're only going to need about a quarter cup of flour. Okay, you won't need as much. I made my, more because I have this big family I need to cover up. Okay, and even if you made a medium sized one, you probably only need a quarter cup of flour. So make sure you ask whoever's in charge of the kitchen at your house to help you. Um, don't just take the flour without asking, just in case they might have plans to make something else with it. But like I said, you don't need a whole bunch of it. Now this is too thick. Do you see how thick that is? Too, too thick. Okay, so I'm going to just add a little bit more water. Okay, and this is kind of how you need to do it. You just kind of add a little bit of water. and I stir it with a fork to try to get rid of the lumps. I don't want it to be too lumpy, okay? And you stir it gently so you don't spill it all over the place. And that's starting to look better. See how it drips off the spoon? It's kind of like pancake batter, okay? So that's about right. So I'm going to put my water over here. Okay, so the next part, pretty easy. So you're just going to take one of your little critters and you need to dip your newspaper in the paper mache and you see how I'm wiping it off with my fingers. Here, I'll show you sideways. Wipe it off. You don't want to have a ton of it on. Oops, we came untaped. That's okay. I'll just tape them right back on. I'll just stick them on. You don't want it. You don't want too much on your piece of newspaper. Okay. 
So then you're going to take another piece and I'm picking my smaller pieces because this is just a little tiny guy. Okay, and you do want to smooth it out. You don't want to have a whole bunch of paper mache left on your little critter. Okay, and of course, if you want, you can tear it as you go, you know, if you have some bigger pieces. Okay, your pieces should overlap so that you won't see any masking tape or tiny little bit of foil showing through. Okay, and yes, your hands will get a little bit gross while you're doing this. Notice how I wipe off that extra. That's really, really important. Okay, and then I'm going to put some right there between his little ears, too. And I always kind of smooth it down. Now, do you see how his ear is getting kind of loose? I need to get right on that. And I need to put a little piece there. So flour and water, when it mixes up, it, it becomes glue. So when you're finished with this, your mouse is going to be, or your uh, whatever you're making, is going to be very sturdy okay now you see that little ear was kind of flopping around so i just put a little piece of paper right here and smoothed it down okay so i already have a lot of this little guy covered um when it comes to the little space around his mouth okay um you probably don't want to just go like that because then his mouth is going to have this sort of funny shape if you take your newspaper and you wrap it around like that, and then you'll be able to keep that pointy mouth mouse shape that you want to have. Same with the um, hedgehog. Now the bunny, of course, doesn't have a pointy little mouth, and yes, this does get to pretty sticky as you can see. The bunny doesn't have a pointy mouth, so you won't have to do that with the bunny. Okay. Now, if your fingers start getting disgusting, then you all have to go to the nearest sink and wipe your hands off. I do not recommend wiping your hands off, though, until you're completely done, because they're just going to get gross again, okay? All right, so let's talk about what we're going to do with the ears, okay? Remember, always smooth it down okay, after you stick it on. This is You don't want to rush through this. You want to do a nice, careful job. The other thing you can do is, um, here I'll, I'll show you in a second once I finish this. So this piece that I'm putting back here, it doesn't want to stay down, so I really have to work to smooth it down. Okay. Of course, you do want to be a little bit gentle. You don't want to squish your, your mouse. Okay, so some people will go like this. They stick their fingers in and then just wipe it on the paper like that. Um, and you can do that if you want to. Okay. All right, so this mouse is really coming along. I think this is going to be so cute when I'm done. Now, when you finish these, you have a couple of options for how you want to color, you know, like finish, finish them. So if you have paint in your house, you can paint them. Um, watercolors will not work, but acrylic paint, if you have those little bottles that you get at Walmart for 50 cents, those will work. Um, temper paint will work. If you just have regular temper paint, that'll work too. If you don't have paint though, um, start looking in magazines and cutting out pages that have colors that you like. So if you want to make your animal a realistic color, then you would, you know, cut out some pages that have browns and tans or whites or whatever you want your little critter to be. Um, but don't, um, limit yourself to that. Maybe you want to make a little uh, herd of little crazy mice and maybe you want to make them polka dotted or or um, maybe you want to make them purple. So if you wanted to do that then you would cut out magazine pages that have lots of purple color on them. Okay. All right so let's talk about these ears. Now these ears are teeny tiny so I need little pieces of newspaper to do these ears. Okay, so I'm actually going to rip this, make it pretty little, and I'm actually going to do this method for this, and I'm just going to start at the bottom and kind of wrap it around like that, okay, making sure that I push it in there because that's what's going to keep that ear um, secure, okay, so get another little piece here. Oh, this is sticky business. Okay, so I'm going to wrap this around here. 
and seriously these are going to be so cute you guys better send me pictures because i cannot wait i totally miss seeing your artwork okay so that guy's ear is almost covered i need to get a little bit more at the top so i'm going to need a little tiny piece i hope i'm holding this so you can see it because i'm not looking at my computer right now because my fingers are gross and then i'm gonna have to turn off my computer with my gross fingers okay now the other thing you can do is let's say that it it gets on there a little bit bumpy okay you can trim that with your scissors when you're done but try to get it as close as you can um, when I made the little bunny I just trimmed the excess off with my scissors that didn't when it wasn't super smooth okay so getting there Remember when you get into this little part where the ear is connected to the body that you press down. I hope you can see that I'm pressing down on that. And you can see his little head forming, I think. See his little head forming? Hello! Okay. I'm going to put a little bit more on. And there we go. Okay. And so there is his ear both ears look like they're done now okay looks pretty good i've missed a spot here so i need to go back and i'm not even going to dip that because i got so much goop going on here i don't need to okay now if you see this happening where the newspaper isn't sticking you either have to put a little bit more paper mache on or you can rummage through your paper get it stuck on all of your fingers and yell for somebody to come and take it off your fingers because you're getting frustrated or say please help me get this paper off my fingers okay and let's see where was i oh yeah we need to get that little spot right there so i think i'm going to dip that wipe it on the side and we'll cover that up all right so i'm smoothing that down i just want to make sure i maintain that little point that little mice have there okay all right so he looks good Oop. so i need a little bit back there so i'm going to go to where my bigger pieces are because that's a much bigger area i can cover with a nice big piece there okay and if it's dry like that which i just did you just need to make sure that you the paper mache over there okay and i think if i put just maybe another piece there I can finish this little guy up. Okay. Don't make sure it's not wet. Okay. So you smooth it out. Take one last look around. Flip them all around. Oop, forgot another spot there. So I'll just take a little piece and put it right there. Okay. So there we go. He looks pretty good. This does not look really good right here. So I'm going to try to fold that in a little bit okay all right so here's my mouse there he is he looks like a potato with ears and when you are done you need to put your name and class code nope psych you need to put it on something that it will not stick to as it's drying so I have a little bit of aluminum foil here that you can see and that's where I'm going to put my mouse to dry. Now your mouse likes to, um, he, he will dry, it won't take him, uh, well it will take him a day. It will, you can't paint him today. You'll have to let him dry and then paint him tomorrow. Um, or cover them with magazines or whatever you decided but you should check on them during the day and because his bottom will not dry because he's sitting on this foil let me scooch this over okay because he's sitting on the foil his bottom won't dry so once you see the top part is drying you need to kind of turn him over so that he you can let his tummy dry okay all right now if you don't have newspaper at home i'm going to get this other little guy out so you can see that we still have tons of paper mache left no problem um, this is paper towel and I ripped up one paper towel only one 
and it will be more than enough you know what I'm guessing it'll be more than enough to even cover my middle size mouse okay so sticking to me big time okay oh my gosh can you see that <laughs> oh my gosh okay we'll just go like this see yours is gonna get messy too just so you know um, you can dip your paper towel in and do the same thing and it's will turn out nice and sturdy just like the other one okay so if you could see what I'm doing just putting paper towel and literally I cut up one paper towel I still have a giant or I didn't cut it you can just tear it I still have a giant amount of paper towel left so one paper towel will cover quite a bit of your special little character okay all right so what I'm gonna do is I am going to finish covering this guy and the rest of my family and then my next video we will talk about how to add eyes a little nose and you probably noticed it doesn't have a tail so we need to add a tail and the other um, like if a bun if you made a bunny what we're gonna do for that tail so there'll be some different options for how we handle that okay all right I'm gonna turn this off with my pinky and Bye, friends. Miss you so much. Taking me a minute to turn it off.